to come to the stage. He comes from San Francisco, California. Uh, was from Santa Cruz, California. Please give it up for Chad Opens, everyone. Hello. Uh, yeah, I thought, wouldn't it be insane if I just did the exact same set? <laughs> I just picked up that guitar and like, ah, I figured it all out. In a span of ten minutes. Sometimes you gotta follow someone doing a rock and Cindy Lauper cum swallowing thing. It's fucking beautiful. Yeah, that was great. Keep it going for Allison. That was fucking fun as hell. That was dope. Buy her stuff. Get into comedy for the money's like getting into Dungeons and Dragons for the sex. It's not a good money move. Wouldn't recommend it financially. We're doing this for love of the game, goddammit. Yeah, dude. Uh, last time I was here in Santa Cruz, I love coming back here and like visiting. I was hanging around downtown, and this dude came up. He was very like belligerently drunk. He was clearly hammered. And he comes up to me. And he goes, he goes, he's like, hey, where are the bitches at? And I was like torn between being like, I don't know about that language, but also like flattered. He thought I would know, you know. Like, I don't feel like I give off that sort of energy at all, you know. It make way more sense if the guy was like, hey man. You know I can get a good Reuben sandwich in this town. <laughs> man, you fucking came to the right dude, man. I know, a, I know a killer spot. I hear I'm a pastrami boy over here. I'm also a good gravy connection. If you can wait for breakfast, I got some solid gravy connections for you. Maybe an egg Benny too. Yeah, dude. Uh, fr find an entertainment during the fucking pandemic. I'm so glad things are opening back up because fucking people are so bored. Uh, I'm excited for a lot of like shows and shit that come out now. Like, has anyone been fucking with Squid Game? That, game, that fucking show is so good, and like, but there's a bad side to it for me personally, just because like I get shit stuck in my head, like earworms and stuff like that constantly, and like, that one might have the worst earworm of all, because there's like no words, it's just like a creepy music thing, and I'm busting it out in very inappropriate, there's no in, like appropriate times for this to happen, like I'm just hanging out in the bank and I'm just like, it's like, people are looking at me like, what the fuck is this dude doing? The security guard slowly reaching for his gun. I'm like, it's Squid Game, baby, don't! Don't do it! That would be pretty, honestly, it would be pretty dope if you were like, having sex with a lady and that was what she fucking did, like, at the moment of climax. That'd be pretty good. You know, she's just like, oh god, oh fuck yeah, going on! I'm like, oh my god, okay, I must have done something right. Holy shit. Goodness gracious. Yeah, that's a good that's a good little ditty there. I'll tell you that much. Uh, but again, there's been a lot of discussion. I'm not gonna delve too much into this because I'm not an expert on the subject. But there's been like a lot of discussion about like what a comedian can and can't do lately. Like what a comedian's job is. I've heard a lot of people say it is a comedian's job to fucking shine a light into the dark corners of people's minds, like show them spots of themselves they might not enjoy, but make them laugh at it. But in my experience, my personal opinion, it's uh, usually a comedian's job uh, to drive Uber. <laughs> Lyft, door, something that involves a 2006 Honda Civic, okay? <laughs> it gets good gas mileage, doesn't require European parts, so it's get pricey. So that's typically a comedian's job. Yeah. I'm gonna get real personal here, but it's, I, it's, it's hard to follow a fucking cum guzzling Cindy Lauper song. That is, that is not on the fucking. Woo, it's hard. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's hard to do. I, I, listen, I, you know there's been a crisis in the world when I'm getting sex regularly, okay? Something bad must have happened for me to be getting regular sex. And recently, this woman after sex said the funniest fucking. In my. I've never been with somebody who said something funnier after sex. She goes, uh. I knew you would be really good at eating pussy. And I was like, why, how'd you, how would you know that? And she goes, well, because of what you did with your mouth on stage. And I was like, well, was I just telling jokes down between your legs for 10 minutes, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Like, I was just like fucking screaming punchlines down there, you know, I'm fucking like, hey, uh, I think I found the perfect song to play during a threesome. It's gotta be Randy Newman's You've Got a Friend in Me. Is this thing on? What the fuck was I doing down there? She mentioned, it was like, I'm somebody who really enjoys a nice lush bush on a lady. I'm not gonna lie, okay? It's fucking, I enjoy, thank you for the woo. It's a good thing. I enjoy it. Let's get back to our roots as Americans, okay? Come on! I enjoy it. I'm not talking about landing strips, I'm talking about farmer's market bush, okay? I'm talking about mason jar of kombucha bush. Alright, you see fucking Santa Cruz bush, come on! 
I know you're out there. It's a thing. I enjoy it. I'm not. It's fucking. Then I wonder, like, why? Why is it something I enjoy? Am I just narcissistic, huh? Like, do I just want to get on my knees, whip down some panties, have my own face staring back at me? <laughs> just looking into a moist mirror of sorts. <laughs> this coming week, fucking uh, the fall back, the uh, daylight savings time is coming up. Not a fan of that. Don't like it. Daylight savings time. I much prefer the fucking spring forward to the fall back. Like, I don't get why we still do it collectively as a society. Like, why do we get together and say, let's do a little throwback? Let's take it back an hour. And we get together and we go, If I could turn back time, I'd make it dark at five o'clock. That way when I get off work, I'm more depressed than I was before. Cher fans here. All right, we, are, we got Cindy Lauper, we got Cher. Our fucking night is good. Hell yeah. It's a good duo. It's a beautiful duo. Does anyone here like Adele? Speaking of sensual songs. Yeah. Yeah? I'm a big Adele fan. I have a crush on her. For a long time I've had a crush on her. There was a very, I'll say this very, like, not a good news story. This was like early on in quarantine. They were like, oh, this is newsworthy. No, it's not. They were like, oh my god, Adele lost weight. Adele is hot now. And I was like, fucking, I thought Adele was already hot. I'll take Adele any way I can get her, okay? What a monster of me if I was like, nah, I'm good. Fuck that shit. I, and I don't know what she's been up to. She's been out there lonely and horned up like a lot of people. But if that is the case, I figured I'd write a song for her, let her know I'm out there pining for her affections, okay? Following a cum-guzzling Cindy Lauper song. So if you like it, let her know. We sing this song for Adele for you. Okay, so here we go. I'm Chad. I got a sweet beard, look pretty good in plaid. I'm gonna take you out for burritos and tea. So please go out with me. I'll buy you some curly fries. Wouldn't that be sweet? And savory surprise, and I want you to coagulate like a blood clot in my heart. And I won't even care during sex if you fight. So let's make this dream come true. Okay? Anybody's got a dick? Connections with Adele out there? Let her know. If I get a date with Adele out of this show, it's white claws on me. Okay? <laughs> That's all I can afford. I've got a budget. All right. But I used to fucking live here. I used to work. I used to work at the movie theater out in fucking Aptos before it shut down. I'm, sh I'm sure you're not shocked. I look like I write Lord of the Rings erotic fan fiction. And I, I look like I lived in the projection booth. There was an incident that occurred when we showed the film Ice Age Four: Continental Drift. Okay? There was a pre-show cartoon. A Simpsons cartoon. This woman came running out of the theater. She goes, excuse me, I came to see Ice Age, and they're showing some Simpsons cartoon, and it won't stop. And I was like, well, that's the pre-show cartoon. It'll be done in a few minutes, and then Ice Age will begin. And she just looks at me, and she goes, whatever, and runs back into the theater. And I was like, what kind of attitude is that to take for a free cartoon? Like, is she bringing that with her to every experience in her life? Is she just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. waiter, yeah. I heard the filet mignon, and they brought me some bread. <laughs> and my filet mignon's not even here yet. Well, that's a complimentary appetizer before the main entree. The filet mignon will be ready in a few minutes, but in the meantime, please enjoy your bread. Whatever! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing down there? Uh, I'm going down on you. It's a complimentary service I provide <laughs> before sex. I'll be done in a few minutes, but in the meantime, please enjoy the cunnilingus. Whatever! <laughs> oh. <laughs> when that joke bombs, it's the saddest thing you see in your life. It's like, I can just picture my dad in the back like, Chad, you have a fucking degree. What are you, 
pretending like you're getting your pussy ate on the stage? What the fuck? Who knows what's on that floor? Have you been in the bathroom, boy? What the fuck? I'm sorry, Dad, you rascal. Oh my goodness. You guys like dogs here? You got dog lovers in the, in the crowd? There's a fucking, do you see that massive dog out front of here? There's a fucking huge dog. That's an amazing dog. I fucking love, but I don't like any kind of dog. Big, small, I don't give a shit. Like something I hear a lot from a lot of supposed dog lovers, they'll say, oh, I don't like little dogs. Little dogs aren't even real dogs. And I'm just like, well, do you not consider Danny DeVito a real person? <laughs> Where the fuck do you draw the line, asshole? It's just a condensed version of the classic, that's all. I was doing some research on like dog breeds, like why they're bred for specific purposes. Like one thing I did not know, did you guys know the corgis and dachshunds are bred that way so that they can more easily slip under a car and steal a catalytic converter? <laughs> they're just looking to score a little meth, that's all. Move to Modesto. I did a show in Modesto recently, because things are good, things are going well. <laughs> And there's this fucking big truck ahead of me and a bumper sticker on it said, Honk if you love Neil Diamond. And I was like, okay, let's fucking do it. Let's fucking do it. I'm not a huge fan, but let's play along. All right. Doo -doo. And like, as soon as I did that, this is all I see. And I'm like, you, you told me to fucking do that. You're like, you betrayed my trust. What is this sick game? Why? And then I was thinking about it, I was like, well, maybe that guy hates Neil Diamond, found the perfect way to lure in fans. And he was like, Neil Diamond fucked my sweet wife, Caroline, in 1982. <laughs> now I hate him and anyone who loves him. <laughs> so if you see that bumper sticker, do not engage. I did enjoy my time living in Santa Cruz. There was one Thanksgiving, though, where I, had to, I went to a vegan Thanksgiving. And it was, it was okay, but I, had, I cheated a little bit. I smuggled in like a little flask of turkey gravy, you know, I was taking little shots of that in between fucking bites. I'm like, what is that? I was like, that's my, my wheatgrass. Like, it's delicious, thank you so much. <laughs> One time I was at a bar in Santa Cruz and this guy was like, he, I ordered like a Greyhound, a mixed beverage, and he was like, real men don't use straws. I was like, oh, this guy's trying to emasculate me for ordering a mixed drink. Oh shit, watch out. And then it turns out he was just like a pissed off environmentalist. <laughs> and I was like, I fucking hate seeing a guy sip a cocktail through a turbo killer. That really revs my Prius. <laughs> Run out of that fucking bar, dude. Would you say horniness levels have been ramped up recently? Yeah? Come on. You know it's true. You know it's true. You heard that cum guzzling Cindy Lauper song. They were stirring in your loins. Don't lie to me, goddammit. They've been scaled up, man. It's true. All kinds of people online posting sexy pictures. What's that called when someone does that? There's a term for that. You can run away, goddammit. Yes. You're a thirst trap connoisseur. A classic thirsty, I call it. And in my opinion, when, when you're in need, when you post a thirst trap, the people that like it, in a small way, they become a hero. Yeah. And I think we should start treating them as such and begin calling them thirst responders. <laughs> Service. That's very nice to you. That's very cool. I was at a bar down here last time I was here. Uh, I wanted to get a, a tasty drink. I wanted to get a sex in the beach. I think that's a good cocktail. I couldn't afford it. So I'd ask the bartender to make me a rim job on the bus. <laughs> which is a PBR with the edges licked by somebody with a cold sore. So, uh, it's a beverage. Comes with a free stick of blue sticks. I did some Zoom shows during the pandemic. They were not that good. They were not as fun as this. They had no bathrooms to get syphilis in. You know. That's the real drawing. <laughs> but th something I did like about Zoom shows was that the lineups were insane. They were real crazy. Like one time I was following like a dude who was doing like a flaming juggling act. I was like, that's fucking awesome. And like, this, things are starting to like reopen like fully. But like when they really do, I want them to go fucking nuts with shows. I would love to like go to a place like the opera and see something like this. <clears throat> Thank you for coming to enjoy Leon Cavello's tragic masterpiece, Pagliacci. But don't forget about our late night Saturday opera. We're bringing you Paul Verhoeven's 1987 action classic in a whole new way with Robo Copra. <laughs> Dead or alive, you're coming with me. 
Is that you, Alex Murphy? <laughs> Scum corporations make me sick. I once shot a dude in the dick. <laughs> Look out! It said 209. You have 10 seconds to comply, and if you don't, I will make you die. <gasps> Robocop! I buy that for a dollar. And you will buy that for a dollar, because the late night menu was corn dogs and jello shots for one fucking dollar. We'll see you at the opera. <laughs> Job. <laughs> Hope you guys had a good Halloween. I wasn't sure what to fucking go out as on Halloween. Uh, one year I went out as a cowboy, or as I call it, a reverse cowgirl. <laughs> That's a big one. PC term for that. Last year everything was shut down. It was very sad for me. I have a tradition every single year. I do. I couldn't do it. I did it a couple days ago. I love doing it. I like to go out. I get embarrassingly drunk. When people ask me what I am, I say my father. <laughs> I'm gonna have to dress up like a can of Coors Light just so it'll hold me. <laughs> my dad drives through a neighbor and sees one of those signs that says, drive like your kids live here. He just turns around and drives as fast as possible. <laughs> But he had a lot of drink, and he was very specific about he only ever drank fucking Coors Light. Mm -hmm. I was like, why? Come on, there's better beers than that. Like, why is that the one, dude? I was like, well, is it just because he's cheap, or was he swayed by other things like availability or advertising? I once saw a statement on a bottle of Coors Light that I didn't forget ever. I think about it all the time. It said, experience the legendary taste of Coors Light. <laughs> what could they be? <laughs> Odin thrust his staff through the heart of the snakehead seductress Medusa and then shoved the cold. I'll just do that to get a few more steps in my Fitbit, so. All right. Let's get out there and guzzle some cum like Cindy Lauper, baby! Yeah! I'll see you guys later on Shadow of the Uh, that's the end of the show. We do this thing every Tuesday. Uh, thank you.